mist rises like steam over a warm cup of tea. Towering oak trees bend over to welcome you. Arunachal Pradesh's Eagle Nest Sanctuary is a biodiversity hotspot. A magical, mysterious landscape where new species of birds continue to be discovered. The drive to Eagle Nest Sanctuary is not for the faint-hearted. The road soon dissolves into a rocky, stony path. And we are tossed around before reaching the campsite. But the view makes up for the drive. Deep in the jungle, Umesh Srinivasan is setting up his shop for the day. The idea is to ring birds caught at varying altitudes of the mountainside. Umesh and his students must fan out to multiple locations each day. At each side, the mist nets are unfolded carefully and tied to bamboo poles. At the end of each day, they will be disbanded and removed so that no birds get trapped at night. The entire operation must be done swiftly with minimal disturbance to wildlife. So this net, very thin uh, net that you see in my hand at the moment, this is a mist net which Umesh and his team have put up at different plots uh, in the forest out there. And imagine if you're a bird just swooping through the forest and it's not really that visible. And well, imagine if this cloth uh, is a bird and it gets stuck in the net. So what Umesh is going to do is he's going to remove it very gently, uh, gather all the data and then quickly release the bird back. So it's contraptions such as these which are vital for scientists to collect basic information. As soon as a bird is caught, Umesh and his students must act quickly. Okay, so what do we have here? So we, what we have here is a migratory species called the Himalayan blue tail. Okay. Uh, and one of the first things that we do when we have a bird in the hand <laughs> is that we measure a whole lot of stuff about it. Yes. Uh, this is information that you're not going to get from a bird that's in the wild and this is vital information, especially in the context of climate change. The first thing we do is that we weigh it mm -hmm. um, and that's important because it gives us information about body condition. Yeah. We measure a whole lot of things such as wing length, tail length, mm. body uh, beak length, uh, okay. length of the feet and so on. So we first measure the bird with the bag. Mm. That's 24 grams with the bag. And now I'm going to take the bird out of the bag using something called a ringer's grip, mm -hmm. uh, which minimizes stress to the bird and makes it easy for us to ring and measure the species. Yes. Uh, in addition, we measure wing length so that wing is 78 centimeter, millimeters. The tail is 66 millimeters. And the reason why we measure the wing and the body mass is that we're finding that with climate change, mm. over time what's happening to individuals and populations is that they're becoming smaller on average. Mm. And smaller birds can lose heat better than larger birds. Mm. And then often what we want to do is mm. to observe the behavior of birds in the wild. Yes. So birds have social networks, for example. So we want to know whether one particular individual mm. is consistently interacting with another particular individual. Mm. But we don't want to keep catching them, right? Mm. We want to be able to observe them in the field. Mm. And so what we do then is to ban them mm -hmm. with color rings. And so every bird gets a unique color combination. So for example, that's a yellow. Yeah. And then I put a blue on the leg. Okay. So once I know that A2403 is banded with the yellow and blue, I sort of know its history. And so you can see that the bird is in good condition. It's not been harmed at all. And I'm now going to release this bird. And it is going to fly away and do its thing. <laughs> Hundreds of birds will be ringed with colorful trinkets to collect data on the impact of global warming on bird life in the Himalayas. Umesh has been working in Eagle Nest for over a decade and the results are stark. 
what we've been finding over the last 12 years is definitely in the eastern Himalayas, in our study site, bird species are shifting their ranges upwards. This is not migration. Their ranges, so every bird species has a certain elevational range. So the species might be found between 1,000 meters and 2,000 meters historically. That species, to track temperatures, to keep pace with climate change, now has to move up to, say, 12... 1200 to 2200 meters. So species are shifting their ranges upwards and there is a danger that species will reach the summits of these mountains, run out of space and wink out and go locally extinct because there's just no more space to move up to. Uh, what we're finding is that as these species move up, whether they're able to remain resilient in the face of climate change depends on whether they move up into primary forest or they move up into degraded forest. So species that are moving up into primary forest seem to be able to maintain survival rates, seem to be able to maintain viable populations. Species that are moving, or populations that are moving up of the same species into degraded forest are unable to maintain survival rates. Those populations are far less viable than populations that are moving up into, into primary forest. One by one, the birds are brought in from different locations, measured and set free. With more than 450 species in eagle nest, every bird has a story to tell, such as the rufous cap babbler, an understory mid-elevation species. Currently, its annual survival is about 80% in primary forests, but only about 50% in degraded forests. The yellow-throated fulvetta, an understory bird at 2,000 meters, it's doing well in both primary and degraded forests in terms of survival and population size. And then there are species like the rusty-fronted bowing, another common species but showing steep declines in both survival and abundance at 2,000 meters. Probably as it moves even further upwards, away from 2,000 meters, because of warming temperatures. At the end of the day, the team folds up all the nets and returns to camp. It may have been a long day, but there's no time to rest. They must now enter all the data on the computer, so they can look at broad trends in population sizes of the birds. evening descends and temperatures dip. It's time to attend to housekeeping needs. Let me give you a sense of the conditions under which scientists practice their science. Uh, this is really the living quarters where everybody stays and we have Raju Bhai over here. He was our driver but he also doubles up as the cook at the camp. Raju Bhai, what do you want to eat karela, dal, bhat. Karela, dal and bhat, that's the food for today. Just step inside here, not far from the kitchen. This is where the team will rest for the night. Some basic shelves over here for their books and their belongings. And there's no roof over there. So temperatures dip uh, down to 2 degrees, 3 degrees. It gets really cold here. Uh, no mattress, there's just a bamboo platform and sleeping bags. And for your entertainment, once in a while, if somebody from the team knows a song, then there'll be some music. That's how scientists live when they're out collecting data in these remote areas. Umesh's own story is inspirational. A trained doctor, after studying for his MBBS degree, he quit to become a conservation biologist. Stories abound in the nearby village of his generosity and kindness. None of this research is of any value, Umesh believes, unless they are able to work with the community and earn their goodwill. So what are his recommendations for dealing with the climate crisis? And what is his data throwing up? Climate change uh, is not just affecting biodiversity. It's uh, the forests that we have in Arunachal are our frontline defense against climate change. And so 
it's easy to say, but but uh, the recommendation would be that we cannot afford to lose any more of the forest that we have in Arunachal Pradesh because it's it's an easy and cheap way of uh, maintaining climate resilience, even for people. Omesh's research may be the first ever confirmation of how the world as we know it is changing. The changes may not be catastrophic, but the birds of Eagle Nest are like a canary in the coal mine. Their bird song is an alarm call for the planet. <laughs>